It being used as a payments, 1% paying and converting Bitcoin to tangible value in the real life is a real way for it to be adopted. Once we hit 100k, that could trigger something really magical. We cease to exist. We can't operate as a business anymore. It's too risky for us to build anything in India. What do you think will be the biggest driver for Bitcoin adoption? Once you have Bitcoin in your wallet, you're closer towards freedom and sovereign individual. You can move to any country and spend it there and no one can take this away from you. It reflects in every aspect of life. How can you do it in a way that maybe nobody notices it? And the only way is Bitcoin. Hi, Prashant. Uh, how are you doing? Everything fine? Yeah, everything is going great. Uh, busy days. Uh, getting ready for Prague. Things yes. Are going great. Yeah, I, I look forward to seeing you in Prague. Uh, it will be interesting. What are you doing in, in, in Prague? Uh, and and you, are, you also have a booth there and you're sponsoring in, in Bitcoin Prague, right? Yeah, so uh, we are one of the finalists of uh, Bitcoin Pitch Contest. So I'll be presenting there on 13th June, exactly at 14.50. So uh, that's one. And the other one is we are sponsors and then we'll have a booth, booth number 30. So uh, excited to meet all the users and potential users. Amazing. This is, this is really cool. I think I might can make it because I think I I will come to the conference at like one Mm -hmm. uh, or something like that, one one thirty. So I might actually come when when you have the presentation. I will I will definitely watch that and, and check you out. Uh, will will be interesting to see. Um, before we get into all the mm -hmm. Bitcoin things, all the the other things, uh, as as I don't know you, and probably some of our listeners don't know you. Uh, who are you, and 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 why are you why are you so passionate about uh, Bitcoin that you even work in Bitcoin? Yeah, sure. So uh, I'm. From uh, I'm an engineer, firstly, so I am too much interested in building products. So, uh, like, especially building product that adds value. So, my college days, I was more interested in like building products and then shipping it out. So, it, it gives me a lot of joy. And then eventually, I stumbled upon Bitcoin. And then, after reading the book Mastering Bitcoin, uh, it was it was amazing how Bitcoin worked, and uh, I couldn't stopped thinking about it and i was looking for uh, like working in bitcoin companies bitcoin startups i know at the time like in it was 2019 it was hard to find bitcoin companies but i was lucky to find one it was called last bit and then uh, the founder was bangalorean bangalore is a place in india so it's a, a capital city of a state in south india so i started working there as an engineer and that's how my bitcoin journey started so i am basically born and brought up in india so I moved to Estonia briefly, like in 2021 November, I moved to Estonia. I stayed there for about a year. I moved back uh, to India to start bringing in, and I came back right now. Of, uh, I'm in Lithuania. Wait, so you started bringing in India? Yeah, so uh, it's, it's, it's a funny story. So if uh, like, like I had to leave Estonia because I had a visa that was attached to my employment in Estonia, a company in Estonia. So I had to choose either being employed in the company and continue having the life here or give it up and move to India to start bringing in. So I also tried applying uh, for startup visa. Like, you know, I made it a prototype and then I submitted, but then they wanted MVP, Estonia Startup Committee. But to build an MVP, which works with uh, real money, it takes many years in FinTech, right? So uh, I had no choice but to uh, go back to India. And yeah, that, that's when I started working on bringing in. Oh, okay. Yeah, I I see that the same thing a little bit with my girlfriend that we talked a lot about before mm -hmm. because I have an Indian girlfriend. She's since two years here and she also has to work with companies and, and stuff like that so she can stay here in Austria. Uh, I I'm a lot of in context with her also with the with the <laughs> agencies. I know I know I know the struggles <laughs> that yeah, you yeah, might yeah, have gone through. Uh, but I love that you you came back and and, and that you uh, did, did the bringing company. Uh, and yeah, how, how's it how's it been? Uh, um, but, but maybe let's first start with um, what what is bringing doing uh, and what is bringing trying to to do in in, in the market and how is it different to to different companies. Yeah, sure. Uh, so, like, the reason why Bringin existed or why it exists is because I personally faced a problem when I was in Estonia. Look, so, I used to receive a part of my payment in Bitcoin. I used to receive it directly into my hardware wallet. So, at the time, I used Binance to liquidate Bitcoin to get euros into my bank account, Revolut. It took more. It took four days to get euros into my account, and it was not only time-consuming, but also it was not safe. I used to get 
notifications from Revolut asking about those of funds. And of course, Binance uh, user experience is terrible. I had to pay fees in every single step. And Kraken at the time did not have SEPA withdrawals. And I was surprised to see there were no like you know tools to liquidate Bitcoin and get euros into my bank account. At the time, I really wanted uh, to liquidate Bitcoin. Uh, I wanted euros very badly. So uh, I was so shocked. And then I, having been worked in Bitcoin fintech industry from almost four years, like in the same space. So I wanted to solve this myself. So that's why I started bringing in primarily to solve this problem, uh, to make liquidation of Bitcoin reliable, instant, and safe in a stupidly easy user experience. So uh, that is what it is today. So uh, our MVP allows users to liquidate Bitcoin from any wallet, Lightning, or on-chain, get euros to any bank account, and uh, it's completely reliable. We moved around nine Bitcoins so far with MVP. And uh, no questions asked from the bank regarding the transfer. We support a instant transfer, so it gets instantly into the bank account and feels like magic. So that's what bring in is today. But uh, we are more like an interface that can connect any bank account and any wallet. So we are going a step ahead, integrating wallets directly, like Albi, Nosso Wallet Connect, and Breeze, uh, like the green light node running, and then you can connect to the node using Breeze SDK. So we're going a step ahead, uh, allowing this IBAN accounts to interact with other wallets that users already use. So that the interaction between Euro and Bitcoin is seamless and with the user experience that has not been seen before. Like, you know, MoonPay and everything has a widget, but this is a different UX that we want to get into user, for the users. How, how different? Because usually um, you have like just an exchange in between. You have like uh, some relay, Binance, 21 Bitcoin, like all those, those exchanges between right. like your bank account and your hardware wallet or your soft wallet or whatever. Um, how different is uh, is bringing now? Like, uh, wha- wha- how how is the the user experience different? Yeah, so uh, most of the apps that you just mentioned are brokers, which who allow users to liquidate and buy Bitcoin. But Bringin is provides a dedicated IBAN accounts to every users. So, uh, like, we are more like a new bank with a dedicated IBAN account and uh, debit cards. So it's as good as any new banks like Revolut and Wise but that has more interaction with Bitcoin, like export integrations, and then NWC integration, LN addresses, LN URL, and more into Bitcoin. So it's like, you can imagine it to be like a Revolut, but built for Bitcoin, for Bitcoiners, for seamless uh, interoperability between Euros and Bitcoin. So you offer a actual bank account with like the bank license and everything uh, and then uh, you have an integration and so it's it's more like you have an n to the six or revolute bank but it's directly integrated with a bitcoin wallet and, right. and less like a broker yes that's correct Oh, nice! So, so you also got uh, a banking license and all, all, all that stuff that comes <laughs> comes with that it's a lot of hustle right yeah, so currently we don't hold licenses ourselves. So we plug into multiple financial services. We stitch them together in this infrastructure and put Bitcoin, connect them to Bitcoin and Lightning in a way that uh, it's given us a beautiful user experience for the user. User will not have to uh, know about anything. So eventually we will get our own licenses. Right now we are uh, using other financial services to do so. So we don't hold funds, we don't touch funds at the moment. So eventually we will acquire our own licenses. And uh, we'll do it ourselves. Uh, it's a it's an interesting idea having uh, the bank account directly lim- uh, in there, and it also brings the the traditional financial system uh, a little bit closer to to Bitcoin. Right. Did you did you had any struggle till now with with the founding and, and integrating Bitcoin even closer to the traditional financial system? Any challenges, uh, regulators, ha- hurdles, or something like that? Yeah, for sure. So uh, the main thing is like traditional institutes don't like to work with exchanges, right? So because cryptocurrencies or any virtual assets are considered to be natively risky. So for bank, like like IBAN accounts provided to the users. So the, if those financial services who have to work with Bitcoin, that means the compliance in-house has to be such a way that it checks all the boxes for the compliance, but 
provide a user experience for Bitcoiners, while the financial services who provides who helps us providing IBAN account sees that it's safe. You know, it's 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 kind of hard to strike that balance with good user experience, not holding the Bitcoin custody, but giving IBAN accounts. So it took a while to do this together, like uh, pick the fin right financial services and talk to multiple people and get this done. But uh, yeah, uh, we also did this in last bit, like my previous company, we did the same thing, but then we couldn't scale uh, multiple KYCs, multiple partners. So we went ahead and got our own licenses. Last bit, renamed to Striga, incorporated in Estonia, got a WASP license in Estonia. So now, bring in users, Striga services to give uh, these applications to users. So bring in is like a technology company built on Striga financial services, which at the time try to do the same what bring in is doing today. Uh, uh, I love it a lot. And then when you have an Iban account with bring in, you basically also can just get your salary right there, right? Yeah, so it's it's not a fully fledged bank account yet. So it's just an IBAN account, which means you can deposit and withdraw funds. So third party payment providers are not supported yet. Eventually we will uh we will allow you to send funds to any IBAN uh, number or receive euros from any IBAN number. For now you can like deposit from your own IBAN account and withdraw you to your own IBAN account with a pension transfer. So right now it's receive only? You can send and receive from your own IBAN account. Like if you have any other personal bank account in your own name, from there you can send and receive funds to bring an IBAN account. A really nice. Uh, 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 I love that so many Bitcoiners and so many people in the Bitcoin ecosystem uh, try to figure out how to make the overall user experience for Bitcoin better. I mean, that's that's right. kind of the goal. Like. Yeah, a lot, a lot of people like think that adoption, like the price, will bring in the most people. Mm -hmm. But I think actually uh, the price com combined with um, the technology and the infrastructure will bring in the most people. Because when we have great banks that integrate Bitcoin directly, uh, when we have all the infrastructure uh, uh, on top of Bitcoin with Lightning, with Layer 3, 4 and stuff like that, and, and I want to come back to that later a little bit, um, then mm -hmm. then people will not even notice that they use Bitcoin, uh, right. but they will use Bitcoin anyways because it's just right. the best base layer of our financial system. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, like, like, to be honest, like people are used to new banks, right? They're comfortable using new banks and bank accounts. So for them to complete a transition to Bitcoin, of course, it's it's, it's happening. Like there are a lot of people using self custody wallet, and it, Bitcoin has to be self custody. But this transition has to be pushed by this user experience that feels like a bank account, like like the way they're used to the behaviors they're used to, sending funds and receiving funds, depositing and withdrawing. The user experience has to be something that they're used to. And but still, it has to adhere to the core principles of Bitcoin, self custody. Because once Bitcoin is given custody, it's not Bitcoin anymore. I mean, it, the whole point of Bitcoin uh, existence of Bitcoin like is defeated, right? Like if you give the custody, of course, like there are uh, like companies allows users to buy Bitcoin, hold in the custody, and then they can withdraw anytime. Uh, that's for buy Bitcoin. But eventually, we need to. Uh, evolve into the systems where uh, we don't hold the custody, but educate people to get into the self custody. But the main factor is trust. You know, like uh, like if they receive notifications from bank account uh, about receiving funds from exchanges, that scares them. And like most of the people I meet, like my girlfriend, who is not into Bitcoin, and she says, uh, "Is isn't it Bitcoin scam or something like that?" People are in that. A notion right from there if you want to get them to actually use it it has to be as reliable as banking as convenient as banking yeah it's it's definitely true and what what do you think is the the biggest will be the biggest driver for bitcoin adoption is it is it the ux is this is it the price uh, what do you what do you see as the the biggest uh adoption driver in the coming future it's ux and price both uh so because like to, till today, it has been price, right? Like Bitcoin has used is, is treated as an asset, which will, if you hold in future, you will 
have financial gains because of the, its anti-inflationary properties, right? It, it has no inflation, so which is a good reason to hold Bitcoin. Uh, and people are buying Bitcoin because the prices go up. Price is definitely an important factor for adoption, but user experience, you like it should not be a barrier. So even user experience might not lead to the adoption, but it can be a barrier for adoption if it's not done right. So with a good user experience, adoption will not be, uh, it should not be a barrier for the adoption. So user experience and price both are important for uh, adoption. And uh, apart from that, like Bitcoin uses payments, like, you know, like shops accepting Bitcoin and then people paying, paying with Bitcoin. So uh, that's why we wanted to create focus on off-ramping because no one wants to focus on off-ramping because it's not lucrative, right? People want to help people buy Bitcoin and then hold it in their custody or any exchanges they want to help people buy Bitcoin. So uh, when people can't spend it, it becomes harder for them to hold Bitcoin. So they should be able to spend it instantly and merchants should be able to accept Bitcoin, instantly convert to Euro. Uh, so that they can escape from the volatility risk, but still accepting Bitcoin, right? So Bitcoin using as a payments will drive adoption, but we are far from there. A lot less merchants actually accept Euro, uh, Bitcoin, but due to its advantage, like low instant settlements and low fees can drive some adoption in payments. And that will really drive adoption, like a person paying with Bitcoin and merchant receiving and the label Bitcoin accepted here and one person doing the transaction so this will drive adoption. Yeah, absolutely, and 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 I love that um, when when more people come in Bitcoin, there will be more people working in Bitcoin, and when more people work in Bitcoin, they will uh, make more interesting stuff and more beautiful stuff and more uh, great infrastructure stuff, uh, and then more people come in because of that. Right. It's like it's 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 a self reinforcing yeah. uh, uh, ecosystem that just gets strong with every person that comes in and, and with every company that comes in Great. with every uh, thing that comes in. Yeah. Um, that's why it's really interesting for me to always cover how people came into Bitcoin and why they, they came into Bitcoin mm -hmm. and uh, how, how was your story? How did you came in Bitcoin? Why did you first get started with, with the whole thing? Yeah, sure. So like first I heard about Bitcoin in 2017 because of the price, uh, like, you know, like it went up. So there was one of my friend who was like, Talking about Bitcoin day and night, he was saying like Bitcoin is like digital gold and it's decentralized. You can send over banks and everything. I didn't quite pay much attention, although it was always in my back of back of my mind. So once I started studying mastering Bitcoin because it got me curious. So and then, so the technology itself was it it looked promising. It, it's like it got me thinking a lot of days, and it's like you can send funds without any banks involved. And the technology itself was super fascinating. It's it, it it's it's more. It strikes your intuition. It's like, how is this possible? Like, you know, like it was, uh, I was mind blown. And uh, and after talking to a few people in the industry and I understand, yeah, it is actually mind blowing. And uh, so I kind of understood that it's going to be used as payments and like, and it's going to be the world's money, like, you know, the modern money. And I'm going to start working in Bitcoin space, building things in Bitcoin for its adoption. I, I love it a lot. And you also integrate uh, Lightning, uh, like you That's have right. Lightning and Bitcoin. How do you see the future of scaling Bitcoin? Is, is, is Lightning uh, now the solution or what do you imagine uh, if we can, because now now we have a, like a few people that are on Bitcoin and not a lot of people use Bitcoin as payment methods. Right. So there will be a lot more people come on the on the on the Bitcoin main chain uh, on on the Bitcoin second layers also. How do you envision like the future for scaling Bitcoin and how do you see that part? Yeah, so Bitcoin is a amazing payments network, instant settlement. Even like if you see like moving funds on chain, fifteen minutes moving huge amount of funds, like the number doesn't matter between two points of the world is great already. But of course, like micro payments, small payments could get expensive. Lightning. So again, like scaling Bitcoin or uh, scaling Bitcoin or Bitcoin adoption, uh, it being used as a payments, like one person paying and converting Bitcoin to tangible value in the real life, is a real way for it, it to be adopted. Like like everyone getting on board on Bitcoin, that network effect has to be there. And Lightning is super important. Plays a super important role there. Smaller payments, instant settlements, instant payments. So Lightning plays a super important role. 
more and more lightning gets adopted more and more bitcoin gets adopted as a payments and that will lead to more exponential growth not linear so right now people are buying for its price and it's a great store of value but when it's bought when it's used as payments it increases the efficiency of present payment systems that's when the adoption will increase uh, it will be also interesting when people like actually use it as a medium of exchange and then more more merchants accept it uh, and then right. then you have it at all the merchants all the the bitcoin symbols there and people are like well, what's that bitcoin thing right. like this, exactly. this will really drive i think it could really drive adoption in a, in a, in a major way yeah for sure there should be a value like if if a merchant is you know, happy to receive with cards card payments and if there is no value that bitcoin adds you wouldn't start using bitcoin for its you know ideological purposes so he's doing a business right a merchant he or she is doing a business so they need a value or a bitcoin so that's when like you know like uh, the instant settlements and uh, cheaper payments uh, can really add value in payments and bitcoin can be accepted more and paid with bitcoin more um what what do you think will be the the cultural impact of of bitcoin i think bitcoin can really make a huge difference in in the world uh, not even for like financial inclusion for for all that obvious stuff but what 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 can make like if we have like a sound money basis do you do you feel like there is a, a huge uh, impact that bitcoin can have on 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 culture yeah for sure so like i'm from india right like it's a developing country the inflation is much more than countries like united states and europe and any countries in europe so i have a lot of cousins and family who was in middle class right like they like struggle for like they, they they work every day to get enough to manage their houses and uh, living in a city id jobs and all that so the inflation is so hidden in the system they're not realizing that their value like their time and energy put is not converted to the value that they can save it's taken away from them without they being aware of it so and it's reflecting in their day to day lives so they're looking for salary hikes and that's not enough and that's creating the pressure to change the jobs so every day every day's life is change, is, is harder and i can see the reason right so i can only imagine if bitcoin is a store of value if they get paid in bitcoin or like if they can store the savings in bitcoin that's how they can have a better life right like it's it's just my close ones like my cousins and my friends so uh, it can really add huge value in developing countries where inflation is more bitcoin can definitely add value and uh, and and bitcoin is also also gives freedom right like for example if i have to move away from india and uh, like move funds to india there's a lot of complaints around moving funds where is the source of funds and everything so i can't like you know take a million dollar from india and just move to another country with convert euros so when i have to convert there's like tons of barriers and everything so this restricts the freedom so uh, restricts people moving from one country to another country it, it creates a nation it creates boundaries it creates conflicts everything is because it's controlled by money so once you have bitcoin in your wallet you're you're more closer towards freedom and sovereign individual you can move to any country and spend it there and no one can take this away from you and it's super it it it, it reflects in every aspect of life people will get better healthcare better education better freedom it, it reflects in every possible aspects of life if you are listening to this podcast you might be wondering what is actually the setup look like of robin or how can i improve my bitcoin setup and there's two things you have to buy bitcoin from the right source and you have to store bitcoin the right way let's focus on the first thing how to buy bitcoin it's simple have a bitcoin only exchange don't deal with the shitcoin exchanges don't deal with an exchange that has an own token or something like that be on a bitcoin only exchange i use 21 bitcoin 21 bitcoin is for me the best partner for that and now where do you store bitcoin bitcoin should be stored on a hardware wallet on a self custody solution where you yourself hold your keys and it should be a cold wallet so that's my simple solutions that's a bitbox you just 
put your Bitcoin on there, back up your seed phrase, and you are better than 95% of all Bitcoin hodlers. If you have more than a thousand euros in Bitcoin, it's an absolutely must have. I always compare to the, the sovereign individual and you have like small animals inside of a, of a, of a zoo, of a garden, but all of a sudden those animals get like wings uh, and, and they can just fly out because right. like if you have Bitcoin, like if you have, I don't know, uh, uh, 50 million uh, euros uh, in, in Austria and you want to move that money to, I don't know, Brazil, uh, it's, it's pretty hard how you do it. Like do it right. in gold, it's, it's almost impossible because you have to move something physical through the world. Right. Yeah, everyone will notice. Uh, when you move it like with the banking system, uh, everything is recorded. Like you, <laughs> you, 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 you basically, uh, everyone will know that. But right. then how, how do you do that uh, without being taxed a lot of things or how, how can you do it in a, in a way that maybe even nobody notice it? And the only way is, is Bitcoin. And exactly. we, ne we never really had an opportunity to do that. And right. I don't want to be saying that someone should avoid taxes or break the law or anything, anything like that. But just the possibility that right. it is possible and to, you, you can do that um, opens up the whole world. Because all of a sudden, uh, countries have to set great incentives so that people and capital come to them. Because exactly. when, when Europe makes a lot of bullshit around Bitcoin and does a lot of weird laws, then we will move to, I don't know, India when they're doing good stuff with Bitcoin or to El Salvador or to America or to any other country. There are so many right. great countries in the world. We're not bind by, by one single count, uh, country. And this is the most amazing thing that I envision uh, happening for, for, for that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So uh, like countries want their people to not leave, right? Like they want people to stay there. So now it's done forcefully, which is not good. So uh, with Bitcoin adopted, like people, if if they understand that people can move any moment because they have Bitcoin in the wallets, now they will do great things for the country uh, so that they actually attract people to the country, not by force forcefully, but actually creating value and creating infrastructure and giving that they want in a very honest way. Uh, one question, I don't know if, uh, if I think before we did not really uh, cover it in detail, uh, what was actually the reason for you to, to leave India? Like, was it always like something that you, you want to leave India? Was it always in like, like your dream or is there like a, a bigger reason behind it? Um, so it happened as part of my job, actually. Like, so one thing is like, for example, if I want to build a Bitcoin company in India, it's not. It's, it's possible, but it's it's like it falls in the gray area. There's no regulations, right? Tomorrow, if RBI is a like banking institute, central bank, and it sends notifications to all the bank to stop working with any companies which is involved in cryptocurrencies, we cease to exist. We can't operate as a business anymore. It's too risky for us to build anything in India we, because there's no regulations, right? Like, I mean, like, I, I, like if, if I was more of an engineer who wants to build good wallets, yes, of course, I can live anywhere. And India is a good place to live. Like I, uh, I like, it's, it's more tropical, like it's warm weather and like you can get both kind of life. And I have my friends and family there. I would love to live there. But the main move towards Europe is because of, I wanted to make this product possible, right? You know, like being able to spend Bitcoin and adoption. So it's not possible in India. Whenever there is a license and then we can do this, uh, we'll definitely uh, be there in India. And me personally moving to Europe was because of my previous company. So they were building payments com payments apps for Europe and we wanted to move to Estonia to get our own licenses. So we moved as a team and that's when I moved to Estonia and uh, <laughs> So again, the reason was we were building for Europe again because of the regulations. There were regulations. So that's why Europe and uh, and it, it's very hard in US because every state has its own regulations and then it's really hard to, and there's a lot of products who already do, do amazing things. So I think Europe needs one good one. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, uh, from my feeling is like America is it's a little bit further ahead with the Bitcoin adoption, uh, mm -hmm. but I have no clue. I did not start a Bitcoin company there or then because 
great thing is like I have a podcast company uh, where I can make everything like uh, Austrian Austrian regulation did not ask me what content I produce. They they just uh, I'm I'm officially a media company actually uh, mm-hmm. uh, because I have sponsors and from them I get uh, money for product placement basically and I get ad revenue and, and all that stuff. But mm-hmm. uh, and also uh, I get directly money in Bitcoin with things like tipping and fountain, but that's like mm-hmm. a really small part of it. Uh, so in, in, in the eye of the regulations, I'm just a media company. I have nothing to do with Bitcoin, which is a great thing. Uh, right. and I will not, uh, name my company because when you start a company in Austria, you actually don't have to name it, uh, until a certain, uh, revenue threshold and, uh, till this threshold, I will not name it anything. And if I have to yeah. name it, uh, I will not name it with anything Bitcoin. I want to be yeah, just like sure. a media company that just happens to speak about Bitcoin. I think I, I, I'm good. Is, is it also a, a reason why you did not bring Bitcoin into bringing? Like bringing has no 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 Bitcoin name. There's, for example, one of my sponsors, uh, 21 Bitcoin, they brought Bitcoin in actually their right. name. Is there like a reason why you did not bring Bitcoin in bringing? Yeah, so that's, no, like I was, like, I mean, the name having Bitcoin, I never really thought about it, actually. Like, uh, it was just a name. I thought about it as bring in. But if I had thought about any name like 21 Bitcoin, I would think about it twice. I would make sure to not have Bitcoin in the names, for sure. So even in like, uh, since we're a technology company, we don't hold any licenses. So uh, we registered ourselves as a software development company. So uh, we build softwares on top of financial services. So bring in as a software company for the registration in Lithuania. Eventually, of course, we wanna we will change that as and when we get licenses and everything. Bitcoin not being in the name is the reason is not to escape from the regulations. But maybe even if we thought about some name with Bitcoin, uh, we probably would not do that. So we would just give it bring in bring in because it's like bringing in the next billion users to Bitcoin. So if you're bringing in people to Bitcoin. I, I, I love it. Uh, we, we should definitely bring in uh, people in, in, in Bitcoin. <laughs> um, one yeah. question to uh, back to the, the, the India roots. I've noticed a trend, uh, especially since I have an Indian girlfriend, a trend where there are so many big companies who have an Indian uh, CEO or someone really high up in India. Uh, then uh, there's there's a lot a lot of examples uh, of of that uh, with yeah Uber with Google with with London <laughs> uh, with with all all that uh, stuff. But for what I noticed is like when we talked a little bit before before that that the Indians are really um, kind people usually uh, they're really hardworking people they bring on a lot of um, um, properties or, or skills uh, that. The Western world usually don't has because they are. I, I don't want to be too rude, but some are really spoiled, <laughs> uh, and and I feel right. like this this hardworking uh, spirit is more. Of course, they are also probably lazy Indians, and they are really hardworking yeah. Europeans. Like I don't want to generalize right. too much, yeah. uh, but I just see that the trend there is like a lot of uh, successful Indians. Do you know? Did you notice anything where like uh, that? you got from India or anything from culture wise or anything that you learn from, from India or from the culture, because you also lived in, in Europe where like, this was really good that I got it from India and it's, it's, it really helps me uh, develop the company and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, there are a couple of things. So one being in India, there are a lot of people and uh, it's very competitive. You have to be very competitive. Like, you know, you have to be best in the class. Like there is limited resources, like government college seats are less. Even for getting into a good engineering college, you have to be the best among like, you know, like a lot of people. So uh, like being the competitiveness is being, is not a choice for a better life because there are a lot of people competing for the resources. Entirely the resources are scarce, the good quality resources like good good colleges to study and, and everything. You have to be competent to be a part of them, right? So the competency is is part of the culture. I think like people are more competent because they have to get, uh, even getting government jobs are not easy. Getting into good colleges are not easy. 
otherwise you'll have to pay a lot of money unless you're too rich it's very hard to get into good colleges so competency is one part and then another part is so i'm like india is more like a spiritual place right like and i i i've, I've been more on the spiritual side as well like i more and more into meditation and yoga and uh, like yoga has really helped me uh, like in various parts of life you know like being composed in both hard and good times i like i would rather i would i would be not so the way i am if i was not into yoga and uh, and that's good that there's a lot of places like i mean right now you can like it's it's widely adopted everywhere in the world but it's 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 everywhere in india like everyone at every other places there are like so many teachers and it's like it's so common there so that i think like the spiritual aspect of it and the high competitiveness see this both factor uh, kind of helps indians to uh, maintain the competitiveness Compet- competent like you have to be competitive to a uh, standard of among a lot of people so that is the reason i think is uh reflected in the outcome like working harder than other people in their peers or being more competent and trying to get out of their peers and doing something else something more so uh yeah i think competence is because of there are a lot of people and that's a that's part of the culture that's one of the reason i think But, yeah, yeah i mean there are, and, and and also there are like billion people so it's like like there are like highly competent people there are like the, if 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 india was filled with competent people why would india be the way it is right like it's not developed country so um, there are a lot of people so competent people live, would leave the country for better opportunities so hopefully uh, uh, india can give an environment for competent people to stay in the country yeah it's, it's interesting how it goes because uh, we have i always love the example of ray dalio Redalio has this cycles of of uh, continents uh, mm-hmm. rising and falling, and we just see it now that the countries like India they're really hardworking, they're great people. Uh, like <laughs> I worked in 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 IT security before, and I worked with really big companies. Uh, and it's always funny there's like an, an a leading management team in in Germany, in Austria, and stuff like that. but the really the work is all done in india in in poland in other countries uh, except from germany uh, and of course the great workers from there did then uh, transition to germany and then they actually came to the management position so mm. uh, and then we came to the thing where hard working people uh, usually end up in good situation uh, and people they don't work hard and they just sit in a management position because they they are german and they are like doing something they they will not have long term success and this is like this um this a lot of people from that one continent are working harder because it's not that good right now and then the other uh, where it's really good they 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 right. worked hard before but now they're like kind of on the downfall again uh, it's it's fascinating thing to see that uh the the whole thing and it will be interesting also how india and 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 bitcoin and 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 america all shakes up and who adopts it first and who does it first and uh, game theory is something really fascinating for me and that's what i love about the podcast being not german but english so i can speak with everyone around the world mm-hmm. with africans right. indians americans canadians uh that's that's really something uh yeah really great to to, to have and, and compare the different world parts Yeah, for sure. So Bitcoin plays a major role in this, like for a country to, <clears throat> you know, like to have the like citizens in the country. So more and more people learn about Bitcoin. It's inevitable for countries to support Bitcoin and uh, like embrace it, not criticize or uh, or like try to ban it or like try to put a huge taxes on cryptocurrencies. So uh, Bitcoin definitely uh, will. be adopted in countries developing countries and i hopefully that will happen and uh, i'm not too much into game, game theory for the nations pans out but i i kind of have a broad overview because living in india and living in europe i understand there's a huge difference in uh, 
sign of living and uh, like in general india is more towards scarcity like there's few resources and there are more people for that and that creates a kind of mentality uh, it could be either good or bad like it could good in a way where people are more competitive bad in a way because people tend to do not ethical stuff to get that resources right so so in and here like i see more of a abundance so compared to india right like there are resources and it's easily available for everyone so competence is less but there's no uh like people tend to do less uh like like it's so when there's scarcity there's more competitiveness and do anything to get that and like when you say anything to do that that kind of n- not normally is always like you know morally or in may not come in the moral uh side of things right so but that's good the countries have resources so that people don't have this do anything to get that attitude and there is abundance and there's resources available and everyone's happy so uh yeah eventually uh, it's a positive sum game it's not like one country can have more resources on the deprivation of another country like it's not like taking away resources it's it could be a positive sum game every country could get to a point where it's developed and have more resources for its citizens and people are free to move anywhere yeah that's that's, that's the biggest thing i feel like um when we talk about and you said you uh, you're on the spiritual uh, spiritual end and and i see that with a lot of bitcoiners actually also um what would you say is the the spirit of satoshi when you think of like when satoshi is like the founder and he got some spirit in in the in the bitcoin what, what is that what is that spirit for you uh so like like satoshi or bitcoin itself is very like it, it's it's more spiritual in a way because it's more intuitional right like uh like so this is not just a technology which is uh just done out of experiments okay i implemented this technology it made a difference and then let it be it, it's, it's it's not tested with centuries and people are using it it's just given and you need insane amount of intuition and uh, to do this so it's really hard to comprehend a person could do this it's uh, it's it's very intuitional uh, uh, that bitcoin came into existence from one person so so like the modern sciences is always like experiment try and then give the results right which the way it is right now but it takes a lot of intuition to give something without testing with the time it's a test of time right bitcoin has to be tested over time centuries to see if it adopts as a main payment system but it's given with confidence that it will be adopted so uh, that's very spiritual for me i love it a lot um before we come to the to the end routine of the podcast i'm 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 always asking that one question uh before we end up the podcast um and the reason i asked the question is because bitcoiners are really cool people and we can learn a lot from from each other uh and the question is what are you currently passionate about uh, or deeply learning about besides bitcoin uh besides bitcoin to be like it's it's more about again spiritual development right like i want to be a better person so when i say that it's uh, it's more about how do i handle myself when things go really well and when things go really bad so uh, that's something that i'm kind of actively thinking about noticing it because and i think that is required for my journey and also that is something that i want to be like being composed in both good and bad times so uh, it's not something that i'm learning from a book or i'm actually doing some courses but it's more about i'm putting a lot of thought into that and actively being doing self awareness exercises to make sure that i'm in that path which is extremely important if you want to do anything in life so uh yes i'm, I'm uh, very, very much like that uh, i also like the uh a philosophy of of stoicism uh, a lot uh and, mm-hmm. and and practicing that uh, as good as i can <laughs> even though it's not always easy but right. uh it's 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 a great great thing to to have uh but yeah uh let's come to the end routine where the previous guest is asking a question for the next guest without knowing who the next guest actually is uh and your question is a question that came up i think already two times before <laughs> uh it's it's the price question um when will we hit the 1 million us dollar mark uh 
it's, it's, it's very like I'm, I'm very bad at predicting prices because i even when i came into bitcoin i was not aware of what the price i never looked at the price but 1 million let me take a guess so uh, 1 million 100k and then multiple cycles it's it's going to be at least uh like five years because the growth is always exponential like the next bull cycle will be bigger and bigger than uh, the previous ones so five years i would say or mm-hmm. uh, that's too optimistic maybe like seven years i guess yeah it's it's it i always think like even like when we could reach like 200 or 300,000 this year and i think like that's crazy and then there are people out there say like oh a million this year and i'm like i don't know i i, I really don't see the way there but we have seen that with Bitcoin before, uh, right. uh, but yeah, let's, let's, let's see what's, what, what comes. Yeah, it with. could definitely happen much faster. It's closer to hundred K and then it's just an X, right. And it is going crazy high before. So maybe, maybe not five years. It, it happens much faster as well. Right. We, we, we just simply don't know. It will happen at one point. Right. That's, that's the only thing I'm, I'm, I'm fairly certain about. Um, but the thing is, um, once we hit 100 K, uh that could trigger something really magical like this is uh like the last one last one was like 10 uh, k and we instantly jumped to almost 20 k when we when we hit that uh and like the 100 k could be an interesting part where we like almost instantly hit like 200,000 or maybe right, 300,000 right. and the difference what we have now is we have all the institutional money, we have micro strategy, we, we have ETFs, right. we have really big companies now with a lot of freaking buying power uh, that get also then all, all of a sudden FOMO, not just a, like 2017 was just retail folks. There, there were no big investors in there, not really big investors in there. Now the, the wallets of the people that come into Bitcoin are just so much bigger. <laughs> So yeah. it, it, it's it's fun to imagine, but honestly, I, I really don't care. I hope that we don't hit the one million because I, I'm young. I'm 25. I want to stack sats uh, now and not, yes. not not later. So my like, if we are ending up this year with 10k Bitcoin price, I would be really happy, honestly. Uh, <laughs> but I don't see the chances, honestly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. So. 100k would definitely be a good number because like and and a lot of other cryptocurrencies and a lot of other uh, like scam coins and all everything is just creating a bad it, it's not going doing good for the bitcoin because people think bitcoin is already at the high now let me buy some coins which is like which they don't know about and then they buy and they wanna they think it's going to be like bitcoin in future and they put a lot of money in there that's where all the money is going unfortunately so it's, it's exactly when bitcoin hits 100k they see that potential of Bitcoin is more and it still grows. And at least for that, they will start buying Bitcoin. So you're right. You're right. Like when it, it turned a lot of things happen. Not a lot of things will change. Adoption will increase. How did you actually avoid that, that crypto sphere? So you are like focused on Bitcoin as, as I get it. Like how did you avoid or, or did you avoid that altcoin fear? So when I started, like first thing is I read Bitcoin and then I was just focusing on Bitcoin. I, started working last bit and the founder said he's like there's only bitcoin there's nothing as blockchain and then he, he explained why he's like okay it's proof of work there's no proof of work in any other in any other blockchain so like bitcoin is not a blockchain blockchain is a concept derived from bitcoin so and then it's and it's only been i was fortunate that i uh, met him and then for the long term i didn't check the price i didn't check for all the coins and everything of course like not having to look at it will eventually you have to go there right so i did like I did explore, especially as a curious engineer, there were a lot of things going on. Uh, like in Ethereum, you can run things and all that. I got curious. I got into uh, that phase where I started uh, trying out uh, not not the coins or anything like that, but the technology, you know, like building smart contracts and things like that. And then it didn't take much time to understand. And there were a lot of reasons for me to uh, like uh, feel like, no, there's not the thing. And then get back to Bitcoin. And then once I got back, it's... It's, it, made, it, it was more and more obvious that why I should not never look into other tokens or anything like that. It definitely is obvious. And I'm already looking forward to meeting you at the Bitcoin only conference in Prague soon. Yes. <laughs> uh, it'll, be but, it'll be great to meet you. Perfect. Then uh, where can people find you? Where can people ask you questions uh, and reach out to you? Twitter, DM. Uh, I, I quite 
like answer to all the dms like i don't get a lot of dms but i will answer all the uh, dms in twitter telegram i don't open it much because there's so many other groups so twitter is the best place and they can reach out to me reach out to me at, on email pc@bringin.xyz so these two places are uh, where they can reach out to me perfect and the email is pc@bringin.xyz perfect i will i will also drop a, a link to the to the twitter handle uh, in the description and then can they they can check you out and, and ask you questions if they have to, uh, if they want to uh, perfect then uh, thank you for being on uh, thank you for, okay. for being on the show uh, uh, thanks for uh, having me on the show it, it's amazing perfect. to be here and talk to you definitely and for everyone watching i'll be back tomorrow with another episode bye 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 bye